Welcome back pilots to another Jetworks build video. This one will be doing the Sipcat Jaguar and we'll be starting with um, 3D printed parts that I've got together. Obviously these jets can be made without um, just fully um, full of foam. So here I've got them all printed in lightweight PLA other than the exhaust put, uh, the exhaust nozzles and the pusher mount itself. So with the glues this build I've been using 5 minute epoxy and 30 minute epoxy and obviously Yoohoo pour as well. So the first step is to glue bulkhead 1 to the belly panel and the battery tray sides. Pretty simple. Just test fit with the bulkhead 1. And there was a wee bit of trimming that I did on the bottom just so it was sitting flush to um, the build table itself. Once it was happy that it fits, just a small amount of Yoohoo contact glue. If you're patient enough to meet both parts up, oh, um, in this 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 part, um, just put it up so that it meets both parts and is glue um, on both sides of the um, surfaces, and then pull it back and let it dry, just to air dry a couple of minutes. However. On the battery tray sides here, as you can see, just applying a small amount of glue along the contact surfaces and just putting it straight in. Then back to bulkhead one, it's quite tacky. Put that in place and allow it to set. So the next step is to do uh, bulkheads two and three and the fuselage sides. Now in this build, I do get as close to Craig's build guides as possible however there's a couple of wee steps that I changed round about and it's predominantly due to um, the sand sanding of the the fuselage itself before I move on to I think it was the elevators and the vertical stabilizer itself so as you can see there back to this um, bulkhead two and three small amount of glue on the surfaces of the the contact surfaces on the battery tray and then just a wee spot on the bottom of the bulkheads itself. Just offer up and tack it into place. And then the same on bulkhead two. Or is it three? Once they're nice and square, just set that off to the side. And then the next part is this, um, the fuselage side panels. Now it's cut out, there is a strip cut along it, you can see for the intakes. This part at the back there, I didn't actually trim it away. That's um, Obviously if you're building the EDF version, I do um, suggest that you will need to trim it away. So there was just a wee bit of forming needing done on the sides of the intakes before I glued it on. That way it was much easier to get it shaped rather than while it's um, glued together on the, the belly panel itself. So just gently pulling it across the table just to get that slight curve and a wee bit of shape to it. And then do the same with the opposite side as well. And I was quite happy with that. Obviously there'll be a wee bit of um, movement. You'll be able to just um, shape it when you, you get it all together. But it was just to get the initial curves in place so that it looks quite um, like it's going to um, go to where I want it to be. So again, just on the contact surfaces of the bulkheads, a wee bit of um, contact glue. And then just a thin bead all the way along um, the bottom, around about... Six six well obviously it will be six millimeter six millimeter depth on we're using here. Again just a small bead in the opposite side as well. Once you're happy with that, just line it up with bulkhead one and make sure the side panels are on the belly panel itself, not against it but sitting on it. Do the same with the opposite side there. I'm just lining up um, bulkhead one there, making sure that both both panels are sort of equal in the right place. And then using a small bit of um, tape, just taping them into place and, and holding them there. 
just while we remove along the fuselage itself and get everything lined up nice and true. So rather than um, ripping off big pieces, um, I'm just tight, Scottish, you know, and using a big piece and cutting it into small strips, just enough to get it on and hold it into place. It's all that's needed. So the next step is exhaust bulkhead, and then obviously we've shaped the intakes itself, and we'll put in the, the tray. Fit, fits fantastic. Um, I was quite surprised, usually I need to do a wee bit of trimming with things. So along the contact surfaces of the, the fuselage sides. And then on the inside of the thin strips at the back, because they're going to slot down against the, um, sorry, just underneath those um, intakes that we've pulled out. So that the intakes actually slide across the top of it. fits fantastic and as you can see I've got the iPad there I'm just sort of switching things back and forward and seeing what I need to do what's the next step where I can cheat or go quicker there at the back there there was a small I think it was about two or three mils I had to um, just shave there's there's a strip just there next to the glue um, just to shave it off so that the exhaust bulkhead um, sat nice and flush and a couple of wee bits of tape just along the fuselage again, just pulling it together, holding it into place. And a wee spot of glue in the contact surfaces of the exhaust bulkhead. And along the bottom as well. So if you're building the EDF, obviously just follow the guide. Um, it'll tell you to, you know, just check the supports, make sure there's clearance for servos and things. And then you'll go into building, um, whether it's a, a tube that you use or design your own 3D printed intake. Here we're just putting on the, the bottom tray. It sits just above the exhaust. This holds the pusher version in place. Just lining it up, making sure I was happy with it and just hold it until it was curing. I did actually give it a wee bit of air time so that it stuck. And again, just using a wee bit of tape, holding it into place. It just kind of speeds along the process. This was a very quick build. It only took me um, a day, really, um, for some of you may have noticed the pictures I was posting. Just along the side there um, of the intakes, I'm sure in the guide it will say, yes, as we pictured there, it says to use epoxy. I'd, if I was going to build the EDF version, then I, I probably would, but I just used um, the Yuhu and then just attaching it along the sides with modelling pins, just holding it into place just so it didn't slip off. Like I say, it only took me a day to build. It was a day to print all the parts and print off the plans, get get them all cut out. Um, and then it was a day just to build um, the, the, the model itself. So the next step is the... Hmm. Can't remember what they're called. Sorry, pilots. This is obviously for making sure there's a nice clean airflow transitioning into the EDF as well. It also allows some air to flow through it um, in the pusher version as well. So here I just cut some, um, not 45 degree angles, but tapered it off. You could sand it, I just use a bit of um, a nice sharp blade, just be careful. And then on the contact surfaces of where it's going to go, I did form it across the edge of the table there, as you've seen while I was blabbing away, just to give it a nice nice shape, and so that when you put it into place, it's not um, pulling away from each other. As you can see, it just popped off there. But a couple of minutes, held into place, and it stuck. So... I usually use 3M77, Super 77 spray adhesive when it comes to laminating parts. Absolutely fantastic. I love this stuff. However, 
it was pouring a rain outside and I wasn't going to go in and out spraying Yoohoo, eh, sorry, spraying the 77, so I decided just to use the Yoohoo pour. And again, I've not actually shaped these parts as such. I thought I'll get it all together and then trim it back and get to sanding. So like we do on one piece, just a small amount of Yoohoo and then offer up the two parts together and give it a good good smudge about and squidge so it's a nice flat even surface and you've only got minimal glue just enough to hold it into place because when it comes to sanding these parts if you've got a wee bit too much glue we all know it can be quite stringy and gloopy um, the, the Yoohoo and it's, it's not very handy when you're trying to um, get a nice smooth um, flat surface so again just each piece that you've um, stuck together the two parts above the last two here and put the glue on the underside of there as you can see just a small amount of glue a wee bit in the middle there get the two of them together and just get a nice nice smudge about so it's nice thin application all the way along it offer it up into place and then allow them to dry set and then we go off and we do a wee bit of sanding off camera while I was waiting on them curing I decided to get the cockpit trays um, reinforcers get them in place just a wee test fit there just to make sure I'm not needing to trim anything they're fitting nice and tight just exactly what we want so again small amount of glue just on one part Offer them up together and get them a good smudge about. And then just at the corners um, where these parts are going to meet, just a small amount of glue in there as well. Line them up so they're nice and flush with the, the side panels itself. And then before we go to sanding, I usually get a nice sharp blade and like I say, just be careful. Trim away as much of the angles as possible, all the sharp parts, it's just, it certainly speeds up the sanding process, but it gives you the nice shape before you start taking a sanding block or paper um, to it, and like I say, it just speeds it up, not so much of the, the white dust kicking about. You could actually, on the inside of these, you could actually trim away some of the foam, if you want it just to make it even lighter. So once we had sanded them, quite happy with how they looked. Again, small amount of glue on one side and then just offer them up so there's a, a nice even application on both sides. There's a dreaded Depron sign. Make sure you get them on the inside. Offer it up to the exhaust bulkhead and it lined uh, across the, the fuselage belly itself, fantastic, love it, and it will certainly add a bit of support. So if you're building the EDF, just make sure you trim away um, the side panels as per the plans um, or you'll run into some trouble. So the next step is the canopy bridges and the magnet panel. And if you're building a foam nose cone, um, then certainly laminate the foam pieces, shape shape them off a bit um, before you get to sanding and attaching them to the fuselage. So here's bridge um, part one. Small amount of glue in the contact surfaces. And then again with the bridge two. We've got a tape, just held that in place so it didn't move a bit. And onto the magnet panel. The magnet panel now um, I actually put an extra piece of foam underneath it there. Obviously it's not on camera, but just for a wee bit extra support. So the nose cone, like I say, printed, printed it in um lightweight PLA, two walls, zero percent infill. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. So that when I crash it, I'll just print another one and put that on rather than um laminating shaping and um, doing what you do with foam but yeah I think the nose cone itself I think it weighed about six grams so in terms of you know weight difference between that and um, Depron it's not a massive difference 
So this part is the the housing for um, the pusher version, for the obviously the elevator servo and the pusher mount itself. So once I gave the glue a bit of time to air dry and become tacky, then I just stuck it on, skipping back and forward to see um, where it is we're going to be, um, what step we're going to be moving on to next. So I then decided the cannons, I printed them off and the canopy as well, as you can see I've got that in place. And I was looking at the cannons and thinking where it is they actually go on. So I'd picked up some um, pictures online, just how a wee look. And I just measured them up to just eyelining it, see where I think it should go. Um, marking on the fuselage itself, as you can see, part of the, the side parts needed trimmed away there. And using a pen, just using the, the cannon itself just as a guide. So actually nervous obviously with the first first cut and the first fit. Just check. It's always better to measure twice, three times and cut once. However, the joys of foam, foam and filler. So I was gently just going along the lines couple of times just making a small incision each time rather than trying to cut all the way through just to get a nice clean cut nice clean finish and it fitted in there pretty good just a, a extra wee bit of trimming just to get it flush so no having to use too much filler and to be honest I didn't think I actually put much filler on here at all I was supposed to but um just excited and wanting to get it built. First build of the year. But yeah, very, very quick, very quick build. There's very little parts to it. And then do the same with the opposite side as well. Measure it up. Trim it out. That's the thing with the 3D print. You parts there. Certainly add um, a fantastic wee wee pieces of scale and things that would be I'm sure obviously can be done um, with a foam um, depron but it would take a wee bit of fiddling a bit whereas you hit the button hit print and there you go adds fantastic wee, wee bits of scale detail and stuff to whatever model it is that you're building and I love it Craig obviously knows what he's doing when it comes to um, card work and stuff. So, yeah, huge shout to Craig for what he does with the jets and the 3D printed parts. So, here I'm just using 5 minute epoxy just to wee, wee drop it together, about the size of a pea. And it was just enough. I actually thought it was going to run out when it came to fitting the parts. So, just enough to get it. Um, on the contact surfaces and I'm putting it on the foam rather than on the cannons itself because on the foam that's obviously giving you the indication of where the glue needs to go rather than putting it on the, the printed cannons and hoping it's in the right place. So just a small amount of glue and just smudge it along. Spread it out nice and thin. Off them up, put them into place, and I just, I just held it for two or three minutes here until the the glue became tacky and stuck together, and then happy at that. So with the pusher mount, actually, um, yeah, I made a wee bit of mistake. Well, not not a mistake. It could have been cleaner. So I'd got all my wiring, my electrics, had a um, spare thirty amp PSC sitting about, um, and. The servos got them all hooked together and linked up, made sure everything was working. Got a wee motor, got an Emax 2205 RS, I think it is, or the 6. Um, 2600 kV. So, a nice wee part check screamer. So, in the plans, there's a wee template for drilling through the pusher mount, obviously, to allow um, the support for the elevator 
so that um, obviously this is not in your way when you try to put in your elevator piece. However, I moved it back a bit um, so it actually sits further out the end of the fuselage. A couple of reasons was I wasn't sure how big a prop I could get on the back of it. Um, so I wasn't wanting to have it too close. And then obviously if it is too close, the sound of part jack freedom seems to be that wee bit louder. I think it's the bow tie effect that they call it. Um, and it yeah, certainly makes a, a huge amount of noise sometimes. So with the 3D printed part as well, the, this is the motor mount. I'm just making sure that the the engine mount screws, the motor mount screws, um, go through it nice and easily. Once they were in, I was happy with it. I put them all the way through. A wee spot of Loctite, the blue stuff. No, the red one that, that doesn't free off again. And then just screwed the, the plate onto the motor, the motor mount itself concentric or whatever you call it um, moving in opposite directions just to make sure it's nice and even when it comes to tightening up the screws and things and then there's the elevator servo I've already um, how do we think about it where it's going to go because the pusher arm the push rod for the elevator was was kind of getting me in a sense as, as to where I'm going to line it up so you had to put some extension wires onto the ESC just so that it reaches the tail for the motor. Um, I printed the elevator supports as well and rather than using the aluminium tube that's in the guide which I don't have, I used a 8mm carbon tube where it's 8 by 6 I think it is, the inner diameter 6 and in that way I can put through a 6mm carbon tube as well to actually use for the elevator itself. So you're here just hooking up all the servos, making sure everything's fine and putting on some extension wires to get it up to the receiver and the extension um, cables itself, I put a wee spot of hot glue on it just to hold them together because the last thing I want is the servo extensions um, popping loose in flight when I hit a tree or do the, the, the whole nose dart thing. I cut a wee bit of um, relief in the exhaust bulkhead as well just to make sure that the wires and everything go through. So test fitting everything up, making sure I was happy with it. Before I went much further, I got the radio out and just started playing about, making sure I was happy with the position of the servos, everything was centered, etc. So here I've got a printed um, control horn as well, and I've bent a bit of 1.2 millimeter push rod, I think it is. Just make sure whatever rods it is that you use, um, when you bend it and it goes under forces, um, you, you don't want it um, having any reflex or, or bending under load. So I'd marked up where the eye for the servo rod is on the, yeah, for the push horn and the control rod that goes on his servo just on my left hand there, that's kind of where the servo arm's going to be and then I may cut a wee relief, a wee strip in the side to allow the push rod to go through and then come out to the elevator itself. In the back there you can see I've got an 8mm carbon tube. In the designs, um, the plans sorry, there is obviously a, a marking, a guide as to how long that tube should be so I just like I say I used um, some carbon carbon fiber tube that I had. So I've mounted the elevator servo and then just trying to feed through the control rod itself and it was a wee bit tricky there but a wee bit of perseverance got it in. Once I was happy that you know the test fit was fine and it was quite happy with where it was and not too much flex in it, it was time to get it glued up and secured in. So on the contact surfaces and the tabs, a spot of Yoohoo glue. 
and I just whacked that straight in. So here I've 3D printed in lightweight PLA the um, supports for the elevator and just like the foam, just a wee bit of glue on um, one side, offer the two of them up together and then slot them into place. push through the carbon tube, the 8mm, although um, it should be an aluminium tube if you have them as per the plans and then just slide in, slide it through, make sure it goes into your um, support pieces there and again cut a wee relief in the exhaust bulkhead at the other side there as well and at the front, which you don't really see, to get the wires up and into the servo hatch. So there we've got the 6mm rod all the way through. And using the ruler, I was just measuring both sides to see where it was sitting. And it was just sitting, I think it was about 7, seven centimetres there, thereabouts. And it was nice and level after a wee bit of twisting. I was quite happy with it. Yeah, it might have been a millimetre out here or there, but park jet up in the sky. So, next step, the 3 millimetre Depron sides, I've 3D printed them, and the exhaust um, decoration as well. So, just there, I'd cut away relief in it as well to allow for the, the wires to move into the, the battery tray, battery bay, sorry. So on the exhaust part here, this is the inner part um, foam that I still had that I cut out of the exhaust bulkhead and I thought was just to stick that back in so that when I put the exhaust detail on, it will have somewhere to stick on both surfaces. And I 3D printed the exhausts itself, the, these were done in PLA because they were so small and fine, um, it was better to do it in PLA without the stringing in the lightweight PLA. And I just off camera, there's a wee bit of hot glue, tiny wee bit, and push them into place. So they're just trimming away the corners, just again, sharp blade, just being careful, just to get a nice, nice wee shape to it. And I should be doing the elevators next as well, but like I say, um, I moved on roundabout to other parts. So yeah, here we are um, due to fix the elevators, but I haven't, again, just just because of the, the next steps that we're going to be doing. Um, and so that when it comes to sanding and things, it's, it's certainly a lot easier. So just a wee bit of glue, mounted the um, motor mount and then it was time to move on to the wing panel itself. So I've got a 6mm carbon spar tube and just line it up against the plans to see how much we actually need. And just trim it away to the size that you want. And then this time I actually got some um, frog tape, which was certainly not as tacky as the tape that I have been using, the painter's tape. And when it comes to this part, it was always a bit of a challenge getting the, the trimmed out pieces of um, foam out. So we've got some frog tape, let's say it's a lot less tacky and it works fantastic. So once we're happy with that, Got some 30 minute epoxy this time and using some micro balloons as well just to um, mix it up and thicken it up. I think it was about 8, eight grams all in of the, the epoxy itself, not including the micro balloons that seem to don't want to weigh. And just obviously put some glue in the, the slot where you're going to put your carbon spar in. Slide in the spar. I've got a wee tin of varnish there just to hold it down, make sure the, the wing's nice and flat against the bill plate. 
couple of sets of pliers and just let the epoxy go off and set. And carefully pull it away in the opposite side. You've got a lovely finish. So here with the wings, um, there's wee finishing details that go over the wings. Just using a ruler marking up both slots and a wee set piece just so that I had um, a straight marking. So when it come to fit them later on, then it was going to be nice and nice and straight. So you hear I've actually used some TPU, flexible plastic, printed some wee hinges. And they work, work great. Lined them up to the, the wing. Obviously I'd marked on the wings um, where each part's going to go. A wee spot of yoo glue in both. And then slide them into the position. Allow the glue to set. More happy with that. So, moving on to the fuselage. Just on the fuselage itself, the contact surfaces, small amount of glue. At the battery tray there, or sorry, the, the housing, I decided to use some hot glue just to give it that first initial stick. Make sure it was super stuck at the receiver side and then the tail piece again on the top small amount of glue around the surfaces let it go tacky and then just at the air, um, vertical stabilizer place um, I put a wee spot of hot glue in there as well so the next step was to put the vertical stabilizer in and then fit the turtle deck decided we're going to leave the vertical stabiliser off just now we'll fit the turtle deck so that when it comes to sanding the turtle deck and things um, no bashing into the vertical stabiliser with sanding blocks and things so once we've got the the bottom panel of the turtle deck on it's time to move on to the sides a small amount of glue along con uh, the contact surface now I've used the printed canopy just as a guide to make sure the, they're up and they're in the right place. So I've just, at this point, I actually put in the vertical stabilizer, just slotted it in, I didn't glue it, just slotted it in. Then we did the turtle deck supports in there. Next step is the bulkhead and the top itself. So the turtle deck bulkhead, just a wee trim get it into place, obviously I removed the canopy, put it back on test fit, make sure I was happy with it so it was nice and neat and as close as possible, small amount of glue on the, the contact surface, yep quite happy with how it sits with the canopy, and then it was a turtle deck top. So again, just along the supports that are in there. A small amount of glue because we will be sanding that away. And then a wee spot on the outside at the elevator side because I didn't want it sticking to the elevator just now. Slid it into place and just forced it in so it was nice and flat. Kept the um, vertical stabiliser in there just to hold them in place and I'm using a wee modelling pin just to tack them so that it doesn't move. Then a wee bit of tape just across the top of the, the top and the sides of the turtle deck because the glue was um, just a touch wet and I wasn't stopping the building process at this point. As you can see in the wing there where the wing over shields um, actually go on I've put in a wee strip of 6mm balsa um, for the leading edge as well, just for support. And to stop it when it gets um, coming in too hot for the landing. So here we are on the vertical stabiliser itself. Now you can use 3mm um, Depron. As you can see on the plan there, I've left it just to use it as a guide because I've printed them small amount of yoo glue and then slide the the tail piece in so here we are with the 3d printed intakes on the the plans itself there is no markings for these on the plans 
because these were a feature that Craig later on added once the, the model was designed. So I just offered it up to the side um, and trimmed round about it. Again, just nice and easy. Rather than trying to cut through in one pass, just using a, a couple of light scores with the razor blade. Just be careful. And then just trim it out and, and pulling that piece of foam out. And these fitted absolutely fantastic. They look lovely. And this is the pusher version. The EDF version doesn't have the inners in it, obviously to allow more airflow. But it looks stunning. Like I say, it can be done with um, just a Depron or the foam that it is you choose to use. But um, I love the 3D printed parts. They, they look fantastic. Are a great piece of scale finish, um, and they're, they're, they're absolutely brilliant on the jets itself. I've never used a piece yet that's I've thought you know it's too heavy. Um, it causes issues with the planes flying in in terms of power. But no, I, I love these things. Great fun. I'm not sure if I love them as much as I love flying, building, crashing, repairing, painting. So here I've just used a um, five minute epoxy it was along the contact surfaces of the 3D printed parts held into place. So I've actually sanded the turtle deck there. As you can see I had the, a strip of glue in for the elevator. Eh, sorry, the vertical stabiliser. So when it comes to sanding we're getting that nice rounded curve. So here with the, now we're moving on to the elevator, once everything's put together and sanded, I'm using some 30 minute epoxy and again some micro balloons. So I've cut the elevator um, spar itself to the size that I need and then using a couple of boxes so that both of them were lined up and flat and level with each other. Small amount of glue in the surface obviously we've taped off one side but make sure you don't put too um, much or glue too close to the inner part I just measured it so it was quite even both sides and then I thought you know it makes no difference when I put the the elevators in itself that'll even it out so one side just gently slide them into place and making sure there was a wee bit of space in between the fuselage itself, the tail part, and the elevators. Just adding a wee bit extra epoxy on the top. And then scrape away any of the excess. And that was it, lovely. So next really is just to fit the vertical stabiliser. However, I've got the battery in. Um, I fixed the ailerons and got them into position. I tried to zoom in a bit here to show you the um, push rod. As you can see, it follows along the fuselage and then it bends 90 degrees out towards the wing edge and then again another 90 degrees pointing towards the tail. I've used uh, linkage stoppers in each part so that they can be manually adjusted as well, mechanically. And the last but not least, back to the vertical stabiliser. So at this part I just used um, Yuhu, as you can see there, and I wasn't too shy with it to be honest. Just made sure there was a nice even amount. And then a wee bit on the tab itself, the locator tab for the vertical stabiliser. Here I'm just trimming away the tiniest the wee bits on the corners just so it's not square um, just to have a wee bit of curve on it some of the guys do sand them down um, and have some fantastic leading edges and things on it however it's a part jet it's how you choose to build it how you're happy with it when it's painted and it's up there flying zipping past you at 50 60 mile an hour you're not going to notice wee details like that. 
So next part should be laminating um, the foam if you have them. Like I say, I chose to 3D print it. I always do um, just when it comes to sanding and shaping and building. And I also have the clear canopy there as well. Printed off a wee pile at wee seat. Moving on to the um, support panel on the bottom that will hold the canopy in the cockpit. And obviously these things will take a wee bit of trimming to get it right. But I did put together a um, canopy building video. Um, it was for the, the Sea Vixen, if anybody wants to go and have a look at that. But if you're using um, the awesome canopies for Craig, once you start using them, there's no going back. So the wing notches, simple enough. Put that on your plane, sand it, paint it. Finish it however, looking however it is you want. I may even add the overwing missiles and drop tanks and stuff on it as well. But here, um, I hope that's helped, guys, pilots. Um, this is, I just added on a wee bit extra here on how I went about finishing the spotty jag paint job. Put a, a light grey um, acrylic water based um, base layer down. Painted the they mixed up some paint there for the orange and then got a wee fine liner pen, started shaping some parts of what I wanted, then got the airbrush out and started doing some Jaguar camouflage. Um, and I think it looks looks fantastic. Up close, yeah, it could probably be doing a bit better, but in the air, it's going to look awesome. Um, there's a the tail, printed the tail, as you can see the exhaust sticks out a wee bit further. Um, but, you know, I hope that's helped. If you choose to build the Jaguar, hope that's helped you along the way. And looking forward to seeing some of the models getting built because it's, you know, certainly not built enough. Um, when it comes to Maiden, I'll certainly upload a Maiden video as well, pilots. But there you go. If you're building the Jaguar, I hope that's helped you guys. Um, and like I say, this is a pusher version. Same process other than putting in the EDF mount and trimming away at the back. Thanks again, pilots. Thanks for staying this long and looking forward to seeing your Jaguar builds. Thank you.